Hardcore hardtails are my favorite type of mountain bikes. These bikes are tough and spec to handle all sorts of terrain. Whether it's bike park laps or chunky technical downhills, the Hardcore Hardtail delivers wild fun. They're quick and nimble, and while at the same time ready for whatever rowdy terrain you throw at them. In this video, we're going to look at a few Hardcore Hardtails for the 2022 model year. If you're familiar with this category, you'll notice that certain well-known hardtails from Norco, Ragley, Vetus, or Nukeproof are not on the list. And that is due to the ongoing supply chain issues. Well, here's what we know at this point. Ragley has released its 2022 frames. Full 2022 bikes are not available and it's unclear when they will be. One thing is clear though, the frame specs are unchanged. Just new colors. I love the color of this Big Al. Vetus has stocked a few extra 2021 Sentier and Nucleus models. And you should be able to find something in stock at Wiggle or Chain Reaction. 2022 models haven't been released as of the date of this video. Nukeproof announced its 2022 models, but the Scout was not among them. The 2021 version is currently in stock in certain sizes and is one of the best values in the class. Same story with the Norco Torrent, except it's completely out of stock with the exception of the $3,800 Torrent S1. Which brings me to another point. The bikes I chose will come in at $2,500 or less. The emphasis in this video is being a variety of models available to meet different budgets. For that reason, you won't see bikes like the Santa Cruz Chameleon, which starts at $2,400 and goes up from there. If and when Ragley, Nukeproof, Vetus release new models, we'll do an overview of those. The Marin San Quentin is a great entry point into this category. This 27 and a half inch wheeled bike was developed with Pro Free Rider and one of my personal favorite riders, Matt Jones. The frame here is 6061 aluminum and is designed around a 130 millimeter travel fork. The bike has a slack 65 degree head tube angle and a steep 75 degree seat tube angle and chain stays are nice and short at 425 millimeters. Reach numbers are typical for this category at 444 millimeters for a size medium. Marin says it's designed to be playful and is known to be a great bike for jumping. This is what I would consider an all-rounder similar to the Ragley Marley. The San Quentin comes in three spec levels starting at $1,100 US for the San Quentin 1 and up to $2,400 for the San Quentin 3. The bike is also available in a frame only option at $549. Out of the three specs, my pick for the bang for the buck is the San Quentin 2. At $1,600 you get a RockShox Recon RL and a Shimano Dior slash Sunrace drivetrain. You'll have a nice wide range 11 to 51 tooth cassette to get you up those long climbs. The San Quentin 2 also comes with a Trans X dropper to help you get down the mountain. The wheels consist of 29mm width rims laced to Shimano hubs. The wheels are tubeless compatible. The bike is equipped with big 275 by 2.6 inch V flow snap tires. I would have liked to see four piston brakes on this version, but you get two piston Shimanos. The Cumminsall Meta HT is a 6061 aluminum frame bike that's a popular choice for hardtail enthusiasts that ride big gnarly terrain. Cumminsall offers several spec levels ranging from $1,500 to $2,300. The bike is spec'd for big hits and comes ready to shred with 150 or 160 millimeter travel forks. The geometry is slack with a 65 degree head tube angle and 74 degree seat tube. The 432 millimeter chainstays balance playfulness and stability. Reaches on the shorter side at 420 millimeters for a medium and 445 millimeters for a large. This is about 20 millimeters shorter than any of the other bikes in the category. So keep this in mind when you place an order. Spec to dollar is okay. My pick would be the Meta HT AM Essential which gets you a RockShox Yari 160mm fork, which can be upgraded down the road to a Charger 2.1 damper that's found on the Lyric. 
The bike is also equipped with various SRAM bits, including 12-speed SX Eagle drivetrain and guide brakes. This version rolls on Spank Uzi rims laced to formula hubs. Also, for an aggressive hardtail, the Meta HT is missing ISCG tabs, which means you can't really install a bash guard or chain guide very easily. For a bike advertised to handle the gnarliest terrain, this seems like a big oversight. Despite that, the Meta HT will serve an aggressive rider well. The bike is also available as frame only for $700 US. The German direct-to-consumer brand Canyon recently released its own aggressive hardtail called the Stoic. Again, we're looking at an aluminum frame here, but this time designed around a 140mm travel fork. The bike has modern geometry with a 65 degree head tube angle and 75 degree seat tube angle. The chain stays are short and size specific with the small sizes at 418 millimeters and the rest of the sizes at 428 millimeters, both very short. The reach numbers are long here, 455 millimeters for a size medium and 480 millimeters for a large. You do get a wide range of sizing from the extra, extra small to extra large. Their site also has a handy sizing guide if you're not sure where you fit. I sized out to a size small in this case. Normally, I'm a size medium. The bike is offered in two spec levels, the Stoic 2, priced at $1,200, and the Stoic 4, which is just under $2,000. Both versions are a good value, but the bang for the buck award goes to the Stoic 4. Here, you pretty much have all the parts you need to go up and back down, like the ever-reliable and plush RockShox Pike Select, the SRAM Guide T brakes, dropper post, and NX Eagle drivetrain. At $2,000, this is a solid, capable bike. Well, well, well. Look who showed up to the hardcore hardtail party. Traditional bike shop brands like Trek, for a while, have been noticeably absent from this category. Most of their hardtail focus has been on XC bike designs. So it's refreshing to see the revamped Roscoe with some pretty aggressive geometry. And it makes sense. They have too much redundancy in their hardtail lineup. With the Marlin, the Excalibur, the Pro Caliber, and even the 820. Yes, they still make the 820. For 2022, Trek's answer to the hardcore hardtail craze is the new Trek Roscoe. To be clear, it's the Trek Roscoe 7 and higher. The entry-level Roscoe 6 still has more of an XC geometry. The updated geometry of the Roscoe 7 and above is right up there with the geometry of others in the category. We have a 65 degree head tube angle, 73.1 degree seat tube angle, reaches at 440 millimeters for a size medium and 470 millimeters for a size large. Chain stays are at 430 millimeters. The new Roscoe comes in three versions starting at roughly $1,700 for the Roscoe 7 and goes up to $2,700 for the top spec Roscoe 9. All three versions give you a boost through axle. Tapered head tube, threaded bottom bracket, ISCG tabs so you can install a bash guard or chain guide, or both. The stock forks start at the RockShox Recon Silver on the Roscoe 7, the 8 gets an upgrade to the RockShox 35 which gets you more stiffness and a newer debonair air spring, while the 9 gets a Fox 36 rhythm. The Roscoe comes equipped with some big beefy Bontrager XR4 29 by 2.6 inch tires. The size extra small gets 27 and a half by 2.6 tires. All three versions come with 12 speed drivetrains with the 7 sporting the value oriented Shimano Dior 6100 group set. The 8 gets a SRAM group set which is a mix of NX and GX Eagle. The 9 comes with a mix of Shimano SLX and XT parts. From a spec to cost perspective, the Roscoe is about average, but the value is in the extensive dealer network with wide color choices and very wide sizing range. So if these things are important to you, the Roscoe might be worth the extra money. Steel is real. And if that's your preferred material of choice, the Saunders Signal might be for you. The Brits appreciate a good hardtail, and UK-based companies are happy to deliver. The Signal is a 29er platform that comes in a hand-welded 
4130 chromoly, or for you connoisseurs, titanium. The frame is optimized for a 130 mm travel fork and features the usual goodies like tapered head tube and threaded bottom bracket. It has boost spacing with room for big 29 by 2.6 inch tires. Cable routing is the way I like it. External brake and shift cable routing and internal dropper routing. For the dropper, you get a 31.6 millimeter seat tube. Geometry is centered around a 66 degree head tube angle and 74 degree seat tube angle with reasonably short chain stays. Reach in the size medium is 440 millimeters and 465 millimeters in the size large. Sandra gives you an insane amount of choices ranging from $1,700 to a whopping $6,250 for this custom built to order titanium model with an internal gearbox. Steel doesn't come cheap. The cheapest version at $1,700 is spec'd with a RockShox Recon Silver, SRAM SX Eagle 12 speed group set, SRAM level brakes, and despite the picture, you get a fixed seat post. The rest of the bits on this bike are Sonder branded. If you want to just build your own, the frame set sells for $774. The titanium frame will set you back $1,750. If you want something unique and you like steel or titanium, the Sonder might be for you. Rocky Mountain, or Canadian Yeti as I like to call them, is known for their expensive, high-performing, dentist-level full suspension rigs. But their bikes are well-engineered and they perform very well. Their entry into this category comes in the form of the Growler. This is a 29 inch wheel hardtail built around a slack 64 degree head tube angle and 140 millimeter travel fork. The bike has a long reach at 450 millimeters in medium and 475 millimeters in large. The seat tube angle is very steep which allows Rocky Mount to run a fairly short chainstay for a 29er. The Growler comes in three versions starting at $1400 for the Growler 20 and up to $2,200 for the Growler 50. The middle spec Growler 40 is my pick at $1,800. This one comes with a Suntour Radon air fork, your 12-speed drivetrain, and Clark's M2 brakes. What? Well, you don't see that every day. The wheels are made up of WTB rims laced to Rocky Mountain branded hubs. The rubber on this bike are 29 by 2.6 inch WTB Vigilante and Trail Boss tires. This bike is known to be very rowdy and a lot of fun. And I'm hoping to get to test one at some point here during the summer. If you're looking for a big, rowdy, downhill rocket sled, the Rocky Mountain Growler might be the bike for you. Well, that's it. It was a good bit of work putting this list together, and I know I missed a few bikes. Let me know of any good ones that you think should have been on there. In the meantime, I'll keep an eye out for new releases and hopefully I'll get to test some of these bikes in the near future. This is a great time for a parts bin build with all the supply chain issues. So if you happen to have a few parts laying around and you just need a frame, lots of frames are available. Until then, happy shopping. I hope you enjoyed this leg of my journey. Thanks for watching.